Joining me now at the desk in Parliament House is former Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And you Absolute brought pleasure, props, homework. What have you got there? Well, um, for you, Rita, and for your listeners, this is the uh, budget or the, the budget papers which we get delivered. And I just want to go through what the voice, if uh, we had a voice, if we actually knew what a voice was, if it was in the Constitution, and we had to consult on issues pertinent to... Um, Indigenous Australians, which is all Australians, what they would have to have been advised of first before the budget could go forward, and that would be um, out of these books, um, all of them. Well, absolutely, because every policy impacts Indigenous Australians. Uh, they're not exempt from anything, whether we're talking about uh, foreign policy, whether we're talking about oh, uh, roads... Taxes. Taxes. Pensions. Defence. I mean, it's, it, it, it just goes to show you, because this one might, might be the last budget we have if this craziness got up, mm. that we wouldn't actually have to do this, Rita. We'd have to actually have advanced all this policy to a selected body, not an elected body, a selected body there in perpetuity or for eight years, sort of like a, an Australian House of Lords. Mm. And, um, and I suppose they'd give their tick and flick and approval of, consult, of what they believed is proper consultation on this before we could go back to trying to manage the country. And as the Prime Minister said, it would be a brave government indeed that would ignore that advice. So let's not pretend it's just advice that you can choose to ignore. Uh, even if they don't challenge it in the courts, uh, there would be all sorts of repercussions yeah, if that, you just simply ignore. They'd get you on consultation. They'll say, well, you didn't consult us properly on the fiscal and strategy outlook. Mm. You didn't talk to us long enough. You erred. You left points out. Therefore, we, you know, all your fiscal and strategy outlook, as per, as pertains to policy, is now unconstitutional because we weren't properly consulted. Now, the coalition's new legal affairs spokeswoman, Michaelia Cash, she has argued that this Indigenous voice is going to destroy equality of citizen, citizenship and embed division based on race in the constitution. Well, no lies detected there, I've got to no, say. No, that's completely correct. And you, you think Article 1 of the Human Rights Convention or the Convention on Human Rights from the United Nations says that you and I, Rita, and everybody else is born with equal rights and equal dignity. Now, this inherently says that people are born of, if it got through, of different rights. Yep. And what a weird thing for Australia. And what a weird thing for Australia. And those rights based on something that you have zero control over. So it's not based on your contribution or uh, your character. It's based on ethnicity, the very thing we should not be. That's, that's why it's such anathema, Rita. That's why people... Because they say, you are seriously going to ask me about the colour of my skin and my race before you determine whether I have a right or not? Mm. Do you know how insulting that is? And I try to refer people back to Faith Bandlow back in 1967 in the in the 67 referendum, and, and she is rightly held up as, a, as a, one of the great sort of beacons of common sense and, and, and purpose. She said she actually wanted Section 52 taken out. Mm. She said, there, she said I, my vision is for all Australians to be seen as equal and that Indigenous Australians or Aboriginal Australians, as she noted them, not be seen as a sort of a, 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 an addendum, a sidekick. Mm. That, but th th she would be angry as anything about this. Well, yeah, it is, it's become very strange. The new anti-racism seems to have a very racist uh, undertone to it. Now, on the budget, budget, there's been plenty said about how inflationary it may be, interest rates, pressures, yep. but we've got to also talk about housing. There hasn't been anything meaningful done in terms of housing. We've got new data today showing that the Property Council is saying the... Uh, uh, new home builds have plunged to a 10-year low. We're expecting 1.5 million migrants over the next, uh, what, five years, I think, 900,000 over the next two years. Where are they going to live, Barnaby? 7,000 a week. And if you go into a town such as Scone, saying, like, every week we have to build the houses for uh, the people who arrived in Australia, the schools, the hospitals, the police stations, they've all got to be there. And, of course... Rita, if they're not living in regional areas, they're going to be living in Sydney. So look forward to them They'll be in Melbourne, up. Sydney, Brisbane. Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane is where Majority. they're going to be, on the roads with you. And this is a, an absurdity that we think that uh, as we lock up our forests because of the Greens don't want us to knock over any trees, for, which is the timber to build the houses, we make the power prices completely unaffordable so we can't build the bricks and the cement 
Uh, we bring in new laws to reduce emissions, which knocks our cement industry off. We're actually not making it easier to construct mm. the houses. We're making it harder. And and this sort of... You didn't even mention the unions because the unions they're having the a field day. But also on energy, because it's, it's housing is obviously a huge consideration, but you mentioned roads, hospitals, schools. Please. The grid, the energy grid. I mean, 900,000 new people with energy needs... Is our uh, energy sector able to even cope no. with that? No, and we see even now that Minister Penny Sharp, a, a Labor minister in, a, in the New South Wales government, she wants to have uh, emergency meetings about the power grid and because they're, they're worried about a closing. They're just... I drove past Liddell. They're demolishing it. It is... Incredible that they would do insane, that. Insane, insane. And uh, that's 1.3 million people it would have provided power for. Now it's shut down. Uh, and... You know, these people arrive and how on earth... We're really struggling providing power for the people who are here. The power bills for Australians have gone through the roof. And Paul Broad did it so well the other day when he said about Snowy Hydro 2.0, the, the Archangel Gabriel of salvation for renewables. He said, in his own words, that it was bull manure. <laughs> well, we've seen what happens in other countries that are further advanced down this road than we are, and it ain't pretty. And some of those countries have got the advantage of nuclear, which we've just seemed to have ruled out. Before I let you go, Peter Dutton is just about 20 yes. minutes away from handing down the budget reply. Uh, what would you like to see? I just re reinforce the, the views that we have on, on our political belief, uh, our belief in the family home as a primary form of investment. The fact that if you can get a job, you go out and work. Don't have other people work for you. Um, it, you know, we on your own on Sky the other night. Forty thousand people in the last ten years have never had a job. I mean, what are you doing living under a rock? I mean, there are jobs everywhere, and people. I'd say there are a lot of people. If you don't have a job, you're not unemployed. Mm. You're lazy, lazy. You know, and well, a lot of countries have got time limits on their unemployment benefits. Even some left-leaning uh, countries that have got very uh, generous uh, social welfare programs, but we are quite unusual in that there is no time limit. I, yeah, I, but if you're genuinely unemployed, you should be genuinely looked after, but I don't genuinely believe a lot of these people are actually genuinely looking for a job. Mm. And that means that other people have to go to work for them. You, your listeners, other people, people stacking bricks, building houses, shearing sheep. The leaners and the lifters we used yeah, to talk the about. The clerks at the banks. They all go to work and they have to look at it out the window and say, that person there is not going to work and actually I'm going to work for them. I must be their servant. <laughs> Barnaby Joyce, always a pleasure. Thank you, Rita. Again shortly.